nicest, the most talented, uh, best surgeon that I've ever met, and that is our partner, Dr. Harry Ezell. So thank you for being here. Many of you probably don't know Harry because he has been away from the medical staff for a number of years. Uh, look at some of you, and I think probably you were children, maybe even delivered by Harry. Uh, <laughs> but you're here tonight to help in this celebration. Harry was born and raised in Corsicana, Texas. Are you familiar with that town? <laughs> Down Interstate 45, about 55 miles southeast of Dallas, Texas. Uh, it's, west, it's best known for a uh, company there called the Collins Street Bakery. And the motto of the city is they are the largest exporter in the world of fruitcakes. <laughs> Harry, you're not a fruitcake. <laughs> but you were exported from Corsicana. Which explains probably some of the things that uh, we learned over the years from this quiet, tall Texan who never forgot his accent from Corsicana. Words like Italian, <laughs> which I assume were people from Italy. <laughs> or the time he came in and asked me about Paisa, which is also Italian for pizza. <laughs> But my all-time favorite, Harry, of all these years was Hawaii, <laughs> or the state of Hawaii. But uh, it's always fun to poke a little jest here at Harry. But let me go back and tell you about his background. His grandfather graduated from Vanderbilt Medical School in 1884, the fourth graduating class in medicine from that esteemed university. Years later, his father graduated from that very same institution. And so, in keeping with her tradition, Harry graduated from Vanderbilt in 1944 as well. He interned for a year at the uh, University Hospital at Vanderbilt. And of course, at that time, we were in the middle of World War II. Harry en uh, enlisted in the um, Army. He was stationed at Fort Dix, New Jersey, uh, in the rank of captain, and served at Fort Dix from his graduation time in 19, from his internship time in 1945, for about a year and a half. Uh, things weren't as well organized as they are these days. Harry applied for a residency at Ohio State University and was accepted. Uh, he and his wife, Sissy, came on to Columbus but found out that the residency would not start until January of 1947. Now here we are in 1946, and it is March of that year, and he has all this time between then and starting the residency. He was taken under uh, the wing of Dr. Bob Daly, and Bob saw the predicament that Harry was in, and because of his station at Mount Carmel Hospital, he had Harry work in the OB department at Mount Carmel for that eight-month period of time until his residency would start. It was a very interesting time for Harry. He was the only doctor there as the house officer, and so basically he lived there. Uh, our young residents who now put in 60 or less our work weeks, I uh, never fathom putting in those kind of hours, but it was a great learning experience, and he learned from the best, and that was Dr. Bob Daly. It was interesting, though, Mount Carmel was a small family unit in those days, run by the Sisters of the Holy Cross. Harry actually ate in the convent with the nuns. <laughs> and uh, became very good friends. They liked him, he liked them. And so they invited him to their Christmas party just before he was to leave to go to Ohio State. He insisted he couldn't find a babysitter. No problem. Bring your toddler down to the hospital, we'll put him in the newborn nursery in one of the bassinets. <laughs> Everybody will assume he's one of the babies here in the hospital, and they babysat him. And that 
that was the kind of legacy from Mount Carmel that Harry loved. Also, little interesting tidbits. He had a locker at Mount Carmel and occasionally would find an envelope taped to the door of the locker. And in the envelope was some cash and a little note from the sisters. Would you spend this money surreptitiously buy us some beer? <laughs> Harry was trusted and did as he was asked. And uh, Sister Barbara, by the way, Dr. Bloss and I do have uh, lockers at Mount Carmel, so uh, if you are interested in, the, in maybe a six pack of Bud Light, uh, just put it in an envelope and, uh, and leave it on our locker and we'll continue the tradition that dates back to 1948. Well, after he finished uh, that period of time, he began his residency, very successfully completed a three year residency at Ohio State under. Uh, a very, very well-known um, chairman, uh, Alan Barnes. And Harry was very well-trained, but always was kept under the eye of Dr. Bob Daly, who mainly practiced at Mount Carmel. So upon Harry's completion of his training, he was asked to join Bob and Wendell Scott in a practice here in Columbus. And the three of them practiced very successfully. They became very well-known in the community, um, and very interestingly, they were cutting-edge doctors. In 1960, the three of them formed Columbus OBGYN Incorporated, which was the first incorporated medical group in the state of Ohio. And because they were such good people, good teachers, they grew the practice to 17 physicians, which is what we have today. Now, during this time, he climbed the ladder at Mount Carmel, never forgot his roots there, always well liked. And during his tenure on the staff, he served on Medical Advisory Board, Cancer Activity Board, Credentials Committee, Library Committee, Medical Education Committee, Medical Records Committee, Intern Residence Search Committee, the Surgical Administrative Committee, Utilization Committee, and as, if that wasn't enough, he was president of the staff in 1963. He was finally named to the Board of Trustees in the years of 1975 to 1981, being only the second position ever to be asked to be on the board at Mount Carmel System. Throughout this time, he and his wife Sissy successfully raised five children. Toppy, Mark, who's here this evening, Doug, who's here this evening, Bill, and Nancy. Harry, it looked like you weren't spending enough time at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he retired from practice in 1987, not long after uh, the passing of his wife, Sissy, and he married Betty. And since that time, he's been retired for almost 26 years, and they have enjoyed their retirement by traveling extensively, and Harry finally had time to enjoy his hobbies of photography and reading. Harry, you've been out of our sight for about 26 years, but I'm going to tell you what, you've never been out of our minds in that period of time. That tall, soft-spoken Texan always reminded me of John Wayne and the quiet man with impeccable manners, sensitivity, is still fondly remembered by thousands of patients that he attended in those years. Your physician peers in your career, you have patiently trained hundreds, hundreds of residents at Ohio State and at Mount Carmel. You've taught us the science of medicine, the science of our specialty. You gave us great surgical techniques. But most of all, Harry, what you taught us was by your example, how to be a good doctor. You taught us the art of medicine. You taught us compassion. You taught us caring. And most of all, you taught us understanding with each other and with our patients. Take a look around this room tonight, Harry. You see many lives in here that you've touched. 
And we're all here tonight to show you our gratitude for all you've done for us. We say congratulations to you and to Betty, and we wish you a continued healthy, happy future. Thank you very much. Congratulations, 2011.